This tutorial will take you through the online application for the New Hampshire State Council on the Arts Fiscal Year 2024 Artist Residence in Schools grant program. The tutorial assumes that you have created a free account at submittable.com and that you're logged into the system. So the first part of the application is the applicant data. And so what we will need here is the official IRS name, email address, snail mail address, phone, website, the name of the authorized official and their title, and that person's email address. And then you're going to choose a code for the arts discipline, which is the primary area of the applicant organization's work. And so we have a long list here. It's very comprehensive. And if you have questions about this, please reach out to the administrator of this grant program. This information is required. We actually have to report it to the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Assembly of State Arts Agencies. The next area is your unique entity identifier. In the past, if you've applied for grants from us before, you know that we've asked for Dunn's number. Now we are required by the federal government to have UEIs, Unique Entity Identifier Numbers, instead. This is required and it must match your organization's name. And you can't apply without one. So you really need to have a UEI. There's a link here that you can go to if you don't have one yet that will talk about the transition to unique entity identifiers and provide a link to the federal government's SAM.gov website so that you can apply. If you are a charter school or a nonprofit, we want the year that you were founded and the year that you were incorporated in New Hampshire. And we want to know whether you have a letter of good standing um, from the Attorney General's Charitable Division. And you have to tell us whether you have it and can provide it if we require it. We same thing for the letter of good certificate of good standing from the Secretary of State. And for charter schools and nonprofits, we want the year that you were granted an IRS exemption and that your determination letter is available on request. We are also looking for a fiscal summary, and this is charter schools and nonprofits only, the dates of your current fiscal year, and then we want to see three years of total income and total expense. So your last fiscal year, current fiscal year, or the one that's just finished, and projecting into the next year. Section two is the contact person and site coordinator information, and you only have to fill this out if it's different from the authorized official that you named in the first section. Section three is your grant request information. We want to know if this is a new or recurring project. We want to know how much you're requesting. We want a clearly stated phrase or sentence that summarizes your project, and it's limited to 25 words, so you need to be very mindful of that. We want to know when your project starts and ends, if there are event dates, what those dates are, who the project director is, if it's different from the contact person or the authorized official. And then we want to know the arts discipline for the project itself. So this is different than what we asked for in the first section, which was about your organization. And so now we want to know what the discipline is for the project. Next, we want to know how many towns or communities will benefit from your project, how many youth will be engaged through live arts experiences, and how many adults will be engaged through live arts experiences. So you're not going to count anybody that might be experiencing your project remotely or through a recording later on. Then we want some demographic information about the people you're going to serve in your project. So we want that information by age, by ethnicity, certain distinct groups. We want to know how many artists are going to be directly involved and how many of them are New Hampshire artists. And then we want to know who 
of our roster artists you're working with for the project. And you're going to type their names into the box and you're going to code them. So if um, one of the artists you're working with is actually on the Arts and Health directory, you're going to type AIH next to their name. Pretty simple. Section four is all about accessibility and facilities information. And so we want to know the name of the facility where these activities are going to occur. We want to know the name of your um, Americans with Disabilities Act coordinator. We want to know whether the facility is accessible to people with disabilities, whether you've done an ADA self-evaluation. Um, and then we want you to upload your National Endowment for the Arts Brief Accessibility Checklist. And there's a link to get to it down here. And so you're going to click Choose File. You'll choose the a little window will open up. You'll choose your file and attach it to the application right here. We want to know whether you have established policies and procedures that address non-discrimination against people with disabilities. We want to know whether that information is posted publicly. We want to know whether you own the facility that the activities are going to occur in. If you don't, we need to know the name of the owner, the address, and the length and expiration date of the lease. Now we come to section five, and this is your document upload area. And as I said just a moment ago about uploading, you are going to click choose file for each of these areas. A window will open on your computer. You will navigate to the place where you have saved all of these files ahead of time. You will choose your files and attach them. I do want to say that we really strongly prefer that everything that you upload, aside from media files, be in PDF format. That way, we will not inadvertently edit one of your, any of your files. Um, you can also, where you're uploading multiple files, you can also zip them up, and we'll get to that in a second. So we need your answer to the narrative questions which are usually at the end of the guidelines for the program. We need your uploaded budget form, and there's actually a tutorial that will show you how to save the Excel budget form as a PDF. It's not as easy as you think, so make sure you watch that tutorial. We want a timeline or work plan for your project, letters of support, and these should be current and relate directly to the project. You can add up to three files here. And um, if you want to, you can zip them up and there is a little video to show you how to do it. And these links will take you to that area. We want to see any evaluations, assessments, or rubrics that you're using to evaluate your project. You have to upload an artist acknowledgement. And so um, this is an acknowledgement that the artist is um, aware of the project, looking forward to participating in it, etc. There is an artist worksheet and resume and work samples upload area. Ideally, you would uh, link to the artist's work samples in the narrative, but in case you don't, you can attach up to 10 files here. We really prefer that you zip them up. And you can see that there are a wide range of file types that we will accept here. We also want an acknowledgement from the school that they know that this project is going to occur and that they are supportive. Nonprofit charter schools and, uh, excuse me, charter schools and nonprofits, we want your most recent board approved financial statement. We want your board list. And then there are some certification and assurances here. First is the COVID 19 assurance, next, an assurance that you will credit us and the National Endowment for the Arts. There is a contractor assurance here that you need to check. And then finally, the certification. This is your electronic signature. And so after you click the Agree button, you will type in your name and your title. And then you'll click Submit Form. And hopefully, the system will, re will accept your form. If it does not, that's because you didn't complete a required field. All of the fields with asterisks next to them are required. So, um, you know, if, if the system doesn't 
accept your form. You'll have to scroll up and find out what you missed. You should also make it a point every five or ten minutes when you're working on the application to scroll down and click Save Draft. The submittable system is very stable, but it's always a good idea to save your work as you're working on it. So that is the submittable application for our Artist in Residence grant program. Please let us know if you have any questions, and we look forward to seeing your application.